Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim. And um, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and, lo and of love and of a sound mind. Praise God. And I want to make this really clear from the beginning that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, are you whosoever, believeth in him. That word believe is pistuo. It means to have faith in, trust in, be firmly persuaded. And I'm going to get back to that in a second. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. What do we believe in? We believe that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Messiah, God the Son, the Son of God, always existed. He left glory. He laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh. He lived a perfect life and never sinned, shed his precious blood. On the cross, paying the debt for our sins once for all. He paid the debt for all our sins, past, present, and future. He died, was buried, conquered, held death in the grave, and on the third day rose from the dead. Hallelujah. The nanosecond you believe on him, you believe the gospel. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, as the scripture states, you are born again, saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. You have eternal security, eternal security. Hallelujah. You want to know those scriptures? Ephesians 4, 30, Ephesians 1, 13, and 14. There are over 200 verses in the Bible that were saved. By solo fide, faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. Now, for saved people, we want to grow, don't we? And we want to be renewed in our minds, know our identity, our identity in Christ. The nanosecond you believe, you are born again. You are a child of God, an heir of God, a co-heir with Christ Jesus. You are positionally seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus Rest in him. Trust in him. Holy Spirit does that work in you and, and you grow. We can't do it. Holy Spirit does it. Hallelujah. He's the one, the Bible says, for we are baptized into one body. What body? The body of Christ. The ecclesia. The church. The called out ones. Everyone who has been born again believes on the Son of God and his finished redemptive work on the cross. That's it. Done deal. The nanosecond you believe. Then we want to be renewed in our minds and washed in the purity of the truth of God's word. No one's saying that we don't want to obey God and serve him, but you're not saved by that. You're saved the nanosecond, the moment you believe on the Son of God. The Bible, the entirety of the Bible is clear on that. And so the gospel is the plumb line. That's it. So I wanted to say that up front. Believe in the Lord Jesus. What did the jailer, when he asked Paul and Silas in Acts 16.31, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. The thief on the cross believed on the Son of God. And Jesus told him, you'll be with me in paradise today. Believe. Romans 10.13, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.9 and 10, if we confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart, that's the lev, the inner man, with the heart, man believes and is justified, just as if you never sinned. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We call it the ABCs of salvation. Admit you're a sinner in need of a savior. Believe on the son of God, his finished work on the cross, his precious blood shed, oh, it never gets old. Thank you, Jesus. He died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Woo-hoo! Hallelujah! 
the nanosecond you do, you are saved. You are heaven bound and rapture ready. And the Bible is explicitly clear on that truth. The gospel, Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Now, there is, um, and I don't usually respond to these kind of things, and I, I was actually the loveliest bride in all the land, and I were taken out to dinner by a wonderful uh, couple in our church who wanted to treat us. It's Pastor Appreciation Month, and they really wanted to take us out to dinner, and just fellowship and bless us, and it was such a great time. And then I tucked the grand, two of the grandsons are spending the night, so I tucked them in, prayed with them, read their Bible story, um, read from the Torah, it's Shabbat, um, not that we have to obey that we're saved the nanosecond we believe, but being a Zaydi, right, ha, ha, I, that's a tradition I do when they spend the night on, spend the night with me on Shabbat, and so um, don't think I'm a legalist because I am not. It's just a, a tradition. And we don't worship that. So they, I tucked them in and I, I told my wife and my daughter, I said, I'm, I'm going to go do a prayer walk. And they know what that means. I just felt led to walk around our community about three and a half miles. And I prayed. I prayed for an awakening to God. I prayed for revival for the churches I passed. I prayed for a harvest. You know, I ran into two young men and they were asking me questions. They knew who I was. I didn't know who they were. We have two new brothers in Christ. The one almost had tears in his eyes as he said, no one ever explained it that way. I hated church my whole life. No one's ever explained it that way. And now I think I'm going to have two more guys coming to church and, and we want to disciple them and help them understand the word. Um, be washed in the purity of the truth of God's word. But it, hallelujah, two more brothers in Christ. So, but as I was praying and today, um, in the past day or so, there have been a couple videos made using my name, addressing me. Well, the one brother, um, I, I commented on both their things. I would have never known about it. I I would love to read every comment on every video. You guys know I can't do that. That's impossible. On this channel, family, we have literally set up. Sister Kathy takes prayer requests. We have a brother James now who moved from Florida to here. And Steph uh, who have a dedicated phone line to answer questions to help newer believers and those all believers who are in need. There is a phone number in the description box. We have all kinds of things that are set up, excuse me, to help those who want to grow, who need prayer, who need assistance. We have people coming from all over and praise God, all the glory to God. We don't do it. I've also been accused of casting out demons with the power of Satan. I, listen, it's Holy Spirit in me, and it's in the name of Jesus. If you want to believe that, you can. People have been miraculously healed, and we get accused that God doesn't heal now. That's just ridiculous. Um, but if you want to believe that, go ahead. But anyway, in back to the scripture in 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. Praise God. As believers, we have nothing to fear. In fact, if you looked up um, fear, worry, or those kind of things, I know it's over 365 times in the Bible. We don't fear. We trust in the Lord. I love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I think I was nine years old when I memorized those two verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord. So anyway, um, I'm going to address this up front. First of all, I, I have never, ever said that God told me that the rapture would happen in two to three years. I've never done that. So the one video, that was, and I addressed that. In fact, I had a conversation with that brother. I'm not naming anyone. And I felt it was a good conversation with him and another brother. Um, and addressing that. Now, they don't like that I do, or the one doesn't like that I do news reports. Love him, 
but I'm going to do what I feel the Lord calls me to do. And I've been very clear on this channel. I'm a grace preacher. We are saved by grace alone. Hallelujah. It never gets old. Grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. I bring geopolitical news that ties to the prophetic, and I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. There are channel family members who say, Tim, I agree with you on the gospel. I don't necessarily agree with you on everything, but love you. And that doesn't have to break fellowship. The gospel is the plumb line. So anyway, in the one video, the man starts out with that, and it was an error. I have never said that. Never. And there are several others. Boy, my lines have been flooded with people. But the, but the accusation has been coming for a long time. And again, I'm not bashing this brother. Love that brother. Um, but it was based in error. I have never said ever that God told me that he was coming in two or three years. I've never done that. Um, it was maybe a couple years ago now that I think it was the Daily Star in the UK that published an article. Remember around the July 17th that I was the guy saying, stop saying that Jesus is coming on July 17th. People were actually setting a date and I was cautioning them. I'm not going to name any name. They blasted my name on this. I think like the Daily Star is akin to, in the United States, the National Enquirer. Doomsday preacher predicts, you know, Christ is coming. I never did. But hey, I made that channel, that medium. I never said that. And am I a perfect man? No. And if I make a mistake, I'll tell you. Um, I never, never said that. That is So the whole basis of that was based on untruth. And really, that's bearing false witness if people continue in that untruth. But they will. There are people that make videos of me and others. They'll splice. They'll say he says this. There's a woman who for months went on and said, Tim Henderson called me a whore. I never did. She can't find that because it's not true. I never did. Never, never, ever did. There are people who said I called them fat. I didn't. I was using an illustration of legalism of those who will condemn others and say they're not saved because they're sinning, yet they're, you know, 100 pounds overweight. And I called that not a person, fat Pharisee. But boy, did that blow up the thing. Now it's circulating around and uh, they're saying things like I teach fear, fear porn and that kind of stuff. That's not true. Now, I love these people and they're by their profession of faith. They're my brothers and sisters. But the fingers and the accusations are coming, and I want to clear it up. I never said that Jesus said, told me, that God told me the rapture is in one to two years. I've never said it. You can't find it because it's not true. I didn't say it. Um, I did do a video where I shared a word that someone else gave, and I shared and could take it from that. But that person didn't say God said he was coming in two to three years. In fact, there were other things. I'm not going to go into the whole context because I don't want to get it wrong at this point, but that's not what it was about. The whole emphasis of that was not focusing on a date. We know we're in the final moments, but we, being the body of Christ, are to be the people with the most joy. We're the lights into the world. Now, we know the season we're in. We see the signs. In fact, we should be rejoicing. Look up and rejoice for our redemption draws nigh. But that should not create fear and anxiety. And frankly, if someone has fear and anxiety over reporting factual stuff, you need to go seek the Lord on that because I'm not responsible and no one else is responsible. And if you can't watch the news report, don't watch them. No offense here. And if you don't like that I do it, that's your opinion. But, and I'm being as loving as I can. I care what the Lord thinks. And I will check myself. We all should be open to correction. But these people who are just, and I'm not talking about this brother, but people have been just, and they take, and one person shares it, and another person shares it as if it's gospel. And the people who I used to communicate with coming at me saying, how dare you, how dare you create that fear and not care about new believers? How dare you say that the Lord said that he's coming in two or three years, the rapture? I never said it. That is a lie. That's a lie. Find it, because you can't. It's a lie. Tim Henderson never said that. I'll give you another example. Um, that I called the Pope the false prophet. Th that God told me. Or that I had a dream. 
that the Pope was a false prophet. Again, a lie. I believe this Pope is the false prophet, and that's what I've shared. Looking at everything I know prophetically, I believe he is the false prophet before our very eyes. You don't have to, but I didn't say, thus saith the Lord. So see how easy it is to twist it and take it out of context. And so I dealt with one brother, and actually we prayed together, and I felt the call was very positive. I love that brother. We may not agree on everything, but we he agrees on the gospel. There's no offense, and I'm putting that to rest. And the only reason I'm sharing this is to clear the air. Now, on, I don't even want to say the word, on the medical procedure they're going to use to deal with the you-know-what. Because if I say it, I'm censored. It's taken down. So you guys know what I'm talking about. I did share information that is shared by legitimate doctors that uh, it could, with the RNA, change, especially specific people behind it, could alter your genes. In fact, now this is truth. Babies are being born in the U.S. and around the world now. They have been for a few years now with the genomes from the DNA from three adults. We know the Casper, CRISPR-Cas9, I'm not sure, the gene editing, Neuralink, Elon Musk, and the chip that they're going to be able to create synchronicity, artificial intelligence, and human consciousness, basically our soul, in the same host our body. That's all true. Look it up. That's not fear mongering. That's sharing truth. In fact, that encourages me. It shows, it points to how close we are and we want to occupy and redeem the time with the joy of the Lord. I say this all the time now. Nehemiah had a daunting task and he told the people, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so I did share that, but I never ever shared a video about this God gene. I'm not even quite sure what people are talking about. What I do understand is that there was one company that apparently or supposedly discontinued trials and at least one, maybe two of the people said that it took away their God gene. I'm not even sure what they're talking about, but I want to be really clear on this. If you are born again, if you have believed on the Son of God, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. But again, I never said that if you take that, you will lose your God gene. I never did. I have not said it is the mark of the beast. I have said it may be the precursor. It may become. But I, I have never said that. So people are taking things and... I have never, I'm talking about the God gene now because I've been accused. So I talked about the one brother. There was a woman who came on and she says, she says, I know you're my brother in Christ, but then man, she just rails on me. I've reached out through some of her compadres. She's responded to them, but she had the opportunity to also talk to me and hasn't done so. And that kind of speaks volumes. I forgive her, but let me explain what she said that she has anxiety and fears, and she knows that's not from God. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. And then she goes on to accuse me and say that I, she said, I can't remember if it was a dream or the Lord spoke to you because she has a bad memory. So she's admitted she has a bad memory in that video. But she says that I, basically had a dream and said that the Lord told me that if you take that medicine, that it will take away your God gene. That, that is a lie. That is an outright lie. I have never said that. There is not a video out there where I have said that because I haven't. It's not true. And so she built the case against me, goes on talking about how after hearing my video, th this is how, this is how, this is how wrong this is because she goes on it's not just that she's confusing i listen i didn't listen to the whole thing at first but then i did because several people said kept pointing it out and i don't have time for that but she goes on to say that 
she listened to my video, how I had a dream. And after hearing my dream that supposedly the Lord told me that it would take away your God gene, she had a nightmare and that she rejects that dream. I did not hear from God. I did not hear that from God. Well, you're right. I didn't hear that from God. I never claimed I did because God didn't tell me that. It's a lie. It's a lie. And now several other people are picking that. I don't care. Let them go. You know what? If they're picking on Tim Henderson, they're leaving others alone. So bring it. I don't because I honestly don't care. I, I care about them. But I care about sharing the gospel. I care about praying around the community. I, I'm thankful two men came to faith in Yeshua in Jesus tonight. But I want to I want to explain how warped this stuff becomes, and it could have been handled had people come to me directly. And I love them. I mean, she goes on. She says that everything that I teach other than the gospel is crap. She literally says that. Oh, there I go. I said crap again. Boy, I said that in the past. And I apologize. And woo, that went around. So she says, everything I say is crap, except the gospel. And then she says, because of what I say, it nullifies the gospel. So now you're accusing me of nullifying the gospel. Then she says, um, the only, I don't feed the sheep. The only thing I feed them, her words, Fear and confusion. Well, you've based all that off of lies. And do you not see the comments? Well, I can't see every comment. I try to respond as much as I can. We have moderators. We've set that up. And we have people to help. So, And there's a lot of hate that comes. But, oh, the love is overwhelming. To the channel family, I love you and appreciate you. And we're going to be celebrating together here very soon. Praise God. Until then, we occupy and redeem the time. And it goes on and it just kind of goes down that path and she keeps as a pastor, as a pastor, as a pastor. Well, as a pastor, it doesn't make me more spiritual. It doesn't make me better than it is an office that God has called me to. And I take it very serious and I pray and seek Holy Spirit. But the accusations she's make are false. And to say I don't teach, I did a Bible study today on Second Peter 1. 19 to 21, you can look it up. I've done complete Bible studies on Revelation, on Jude, many on Bereshit, on Genesis. Oh, and I love that. And I've got three or four more that I'm going to be doing on Bereshit as soon as I get the time. Um, the accusation is false. It's false. I preach every Sunday. And so if you don't like me and you can't, um, you're not getting... It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. It's about Jesus and him exalted. He died for our sins, shed his precious blood, was buried, conquered, held death in the grave, and on the third day rose from the dead. And so, brothers and sisters, I've said this before. This is going to keep happening. It's, but they, like this woman, she says, what upsets her so much is that I'm a pastor and a brother in Christ and I'm doing this. Well, sister, what upsets me? is that I'm not calling out your name. You're using my name, which you know attracts more views. No glory to me, but it does. And it's based on a lie. And I've pointed that out. Are those videos down? Nope, they're still up. Has there been any acknowledgement that, that I, you know, addressed that issue? No, there won't be. But others... And they call it the grace community. I want to say this. I, I don't even refer to it. I There's maybe two people that I regularly communicate with from um, other channels other than our own channel family and the moderators and all those who help, who I love dearly, love dearly. Uh, Chuck, you, I got to give you a shout out. I will endorse the video I saw today. I was, I was like, Lord, I just need to be uplifted. And he directed me to Chuck. Brother, you hit the gospel right on. Now, I want to go back to that thing I talked about. Um, brothers and sisters, listen to me. There is... You know, there's modified foods, right? There's genetically modified foods. I do. I try to buy organic whenever I can. Spoke with another brother. I don't want to say his name tonight because I don't want to draw attention and, and what people will say who said the very same thing to me today. You do what you want. But 
eating modified stuff, it's it can't take Christ from you. Once you're born again, you're born again. You are heaven bound and rapture ready. You are positionally seated in Christ in the heavenly. Sin can no longer be attributed to your account. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's a done deal. Hallelujah. You're born again. Nothing can take you away from it. So let me ease you. If men in uniforms came in and pinned me down and stuck that you know what in me, I am born again. Nothing can alter that, cannot take God out of me. So get clear on that. Also, I have taught and will continue to teach that the mark of the beast will come and be forced after the believers are harpazo, raptured, caught up out of here. So do not fear. Not only that, but brothers and sisters, we have authority as believers. I believed as I prayed. I believed as I went around and look, the desire, the prayer, God granted, Holy Spirit did that. <coughs> God ordained that those two young men would be where they were, would see me and approach me. All the glory to God. I can't save anyone. Holy Spirit did that. I was just a vessel and blessed <coughs> to be at that moment and be listening <coughs> and led, excuse me, in that divine appointment. So what I want to say is, if you are fearing, that is not the intent of my messages. I never said, as a believer, you are going to lose your God gene. I don't even know what they're talking about with that, to be honest with you. I know <clears throat> that it came from a study. I will tell you, I will not be taking that procedure. I don't even take a flu shot. So... You guys know where I'm, but if you do, that's your personal decision. That doesn't take your salvation away. In fact, once you have believed on the Son of God and his finished work, his precious blood, paid the debt once and for all, his death, burial, and resurrection, done deal. That's it. You are born again, saved, sealed, and sanctified. I, I shouldn't be shocked, but I was a little shocked today from some of the people in the past who have been kind to me, the vitriol and the hatred that has come from this now, it, it kind of shocked me. And that they would take, now I understand they trust these people, but they're, it's based off of a lie. I've already expressed it. I'm setting the record straight. Never said it. You can't find it because it doesn't exist. Because I never said it. And anybody who's been following for some time, you know that. I'm very clear. And if I make a mistake, I'll tell you guys, as to the rapture, I believe it is imminent. That means it could happen at any moment. Everything that needed to happen for the rapture has happened. That being said, I am excited to occupy and redeem the time until I breathe my last or until we are caught up all. Glory to God. He has a destiny, a ministry, a purpose, and a plan for us. And when I share the news, I, I pray, Holy Spirit, help me relay it in a way that encourages the body. Oh, we have nothing to fear. We, we should be as believers the most joyful. And if you are suffering with anxiety, you may need to get counseling, godly counseling, but when you're basing and when you're accusing, I want to point this out because this is really important, not just toward me, but to one another. When you bear false witness or you just outright lie, because if you say that you had a horrible dream based off of the dream that I had that I never had and that I did not do a video on, either you really are confused or you're just outright lying. And I, I'm going to be honest, I, I've known this for some time. I'm not going to walk around being in fear. Oh, what if I say this? What? Because there are those laying in wait 
waiting. Oh, they said it wrong. They did this wrong. That, you think that's Holy Spirit? And when you bear false witness, and even if as your brother in Christ, to go public and not address me privately, even first, now people are going to try to twist this. I just don't think that's the right way to do things. So I'm not going to say names. There are many people who have made videos about me. I love each and every one of them. Um, I really do. And I know God does. And I pray that you all are blessed and saved. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. I have no offense. I'm carrying none of that. But I want to set the record straight. What else, Lord? What else? Thank you, Jesus. When you point the finger at a brother or sister, who is the accuser of the brethren? It's Hasatan, Satan. He's the accuser of the brethren. Even if I feel that a brother or sister, how are we brothers and sisters? If you have been born again, if you have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone in Christ alone, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Oh, there is one more. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that I'll get to. If you have done that, even if my brother or sister are wrong, for me to speak and point the finger and beat them down, we're not. I'm not talking about contending for the faith. For the, the gospel is the plumb line. Absolutely. The Apostle Paul said anyone who preaches or teaches or brings, right, different translations, a little bit different, same meaning, even an angel from heaven, than what he brought. That's Galatians 1, 8, 9. Look it up for yourself. Um, then that person is accursed. And so we're not talking about the gospel. But we may not agree on other things. But to accuse and point the fingers, do you think that you're being led by Holy Spirit to do that? Because some of these people are saying, he's not being led by Holy Spirit. He's being used by the enemy. He's being... And you're basing it off of lies. And I'm only using myself as the example. This is not about Tim Anderson, but this is about the body of Christ. If we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to build, you know, the purpose of the body of Christ, according to the word of God. Why do we exist? To worship God in spirit and in truth. Build one another up in the faith and reach out to a lost and dying world. Now, I'm going to use one that I've heard in the past two days and before. December of 2019, I had the vision and the Lord showed me that, you know what, was created in a you-know-where laboratory. I don't want to say it because this will get taken down if I do. And 5G was involved. I've said all along, all that time, up until just recently, I said, I don't know how 5G is involved. Well, then a doctor came out and talked about, and I shared, that video got taken down. But even before then, even our own United States government and the authorities have said, have confirmed, what the Lord showed me. I knew it was the Lord. When I have said, and again, there's no glory to me, but I want to set the record straight. There is not one time, because I'm very careful. If, if it's my opinion, like from the Pope, I'll say, this is what I believe. I will not say, thus saith the Lord. But whenever I have said, when I've shared intel, there have been a couple times that it has been wrong. And I've come out publicly and apologized and said, we're, gonna, we're going to... Um, hone this in and vet it better. And since then, Sister Ashley and Brother Keegan have done a phenomenal job. And there are only two high-ranking international, well, one was, had information from high-ranking sources and another is a high-ranking source that I will not declare. We have not had that happen. But over three years, twice, I've come on and I've apologized. It, I shared and tell. I never said, thus saith the Lord. And so we hone that in. And we're being very careful and vetting that as best we can. It's been confirmed. So each time it's come to pass. 
And so, but people are saying, well, he said this and it's creating fear. Why is that creating fear? It's bringing truth and always, to me at least, it's encouraging. Now, I want to give you another example. And that's just a thank you, Holy Spirit. I did a video the other day with three of my grandsons and they were um, riding their little, you know, electric powered uh, thing at my daughter's house and they were having a great time. And I just wanted to share a moment of joy. They had been with me on some ministry calls as had my daughter. And so I just wanted to share that moment of joy with this channel family. Do you know seven people disliked it? And some even said, how could they dislike children? And then I got flooded. Now listen to this with comments like, and others, even on the church message, Pastor Tim needs to stop sharing things about his family and about his grandchildren. There are those of us who couldn't have children and can't have grandchildren, and it's cruel, and it's mean, and it's not of God. See, no matter what you do, I could smile and tell you God loves you fiercely and passionately. I could do a video where I just give you a blessing and someone is going to dislike. In fact, I don't think there's ever been a video that has been 100% liked. And I don't care. But uh, do you get my point? No matter what you say, there's always going to be a critic. There's always going to be those laying in wait. And how could anyone, how could anyone dislike those adorable, not just is it your hatred and vitriol for me that you would dislike children having a moment of joy and laughter? Because I'm embracing every moment of joy. And in Christ, knowing my identity in him and what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, right, 13, he goes on before and says, I know what it is to have plenty and I know what it is to be in lack. And in all things, I've learned this. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So here's the deal. Last time I'm going to address this issue um, and not addressing the critics, but I want to address because a lot of people are now concerned because they're saying, well, we really respect this person. And I'm not saying you shouldn't respect them, but I've cleared the air. This is what I said. In fact, I spoke with, the, with two brothers today and one said, and I wasn't going to do it, but then um, out of respect for this channel family, and respect for that brother, as I prayed, I felt led to get on here and do that. And so I'm doing that. I'm clearing air. Never said it. Never said it. It's not true. And so it was based on a lie. And um, and to those who are coming against me, if you want to come against, uh, I want you to know I love you anyway. And I forgive you. And there is no offense Tim Henderson's side. There will be people who like me and people who don't, but it's not about me. It's about him. And each of us, God, if you're a believer, you're my brother or sister in Christ, I'm praying for you. God has a ministry, a destiny, an anointing for each and every one of us. What he calls you to do may be different than what he calls me to do. And with God's help, I will do my best to fulfill the destiny that he has called me to do. Can't do it in my own power. Have to do it in the power of Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad that the nanosecond we believed, we were indwelt with Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you. You have resurrection power in you. So I'm going to end with this. God loves you fiercely and passionately. And if you don't know it, from the bottom of my heart, I love you too. Shalom, shalom.